Hello everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be more of a slimy friend of ours because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful hippopotamus. Now, while slimy is definitely not the greatest adjective to use to describe the hippopotamus, I don't know exactly what word would be best, but they're definitely not furry, and they're definitely not scaly. Regardless, This episode is a very, very special listener episode. I could have said the word very four times instead of two because this episode is not dedicated to one, not dedicated to two or even three of you guys out there, but rather to a total of four of you. Many of you have written in to learn about the hippopotamus, and that would mean that this is a special podcast episode dedicated to Emma, to MJ, to Kirsty, and lastly, to Ava. Thank you guys so much for this wonderful animal suggestion. I had so much fun learning about them and I hope that that will be reflected in this podcast episode. And so if it wasn't for you guys writing in Emma, MJ, Kirsty, Ava for the hippopotamus, this episode would not have been possible. For those of you that wish to write into the show so that you can hear about and learn about a particular animal that you think is super cool and super interesting and you want to have your very own podcast episode, make sure to write in in one of four ways. The first way and the most popular way is to write into the Instagram handle at relaxwithanimalfacts. The second way is that you can send an email directly to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. The third way is that you can request an animal with our brand new website by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and then going over to the animal requests section and you can send your request that way. The fourth way, which has yet to be redeemed, is by Carrier Pigeon. On the Carrier Pigeon episode, we covered how to train them, though I don't particularly remember how long it takes to train them. So if anyone out there is training their Carrier Pigeon to be the first to request an animal that way, kudos to you and I wish you the absolute best in the training of your little pigeon. If you love the podcast and wish to learn more and go deeper into each animal that we cover on the podcast every week, we do exclusive continuation episodes over at the Patreon page, Relax with Animal Facts. All the links and everything are on the website or in the description of the show. There is also going to be an exclusive audio version of the blog, which is posted each week at relaxwithanimalfacts.com. The most recent one, I wrote about why etymology is important. So for those of you that want to know exactly why do we cover the name of the animal at the end of each podcast episode, that blog post is going to explain exactly why I think it is so cool and so important. 
The tiers on the Patreon for those bonus episodes are all exactly the same. So whether you are giving $1 a month or $6 a month or however much is entirely up to you. I record this show for you guys and so I wanted to make sure that as many of you had access to it as possible. And now let me go to the review portion of the show in which I read a fan review sent in by one of you guys. And in this case, it is from I Love Snake, just singular, I Love Snake. And I Love Snake is writing in all the way from the United States of America. And I Love Snake writes, I saw a bongo at the San Diego Zoo. Thank you, I Love Snake, for letting me know that you saw a bongo at the San Diego Zoo. I live nowhere near the San Diego Zoo, and so that would be quite a trek out for me, but I did not know that they had bongos ready for all of you guys to see that live down in San Diego. So thank you, I Love Snake, for the five-star review. And though I don't know if it would technically qualify as a review in definition, but regardless, I am so glad that you were able to see a bongo at the zoo. For those of you that love the show and wish to leave a review, I greatly encourage you to do so. It is something that is entirely extra and ought only to be motivated by the fact that you wish to leave a review for others to come, listen, and to enjoy the show together. Your listenership already means the world to me, and even for those of you that wish to leave low reviews, please, when you leave a low review, don't just click the one-star button click the one star button and let me know why you hate the show. That way we can at least make some positive, constructive change and you might have something wonderful to say in terms of a way to better the show. This podcast is by you guys, for you guys, and really sustained by all of you. And so I greatly cherish all of your reviews, good, bad, medium, everything in between. And let me just say where I got my facts from so we can go straight into the portion of the show I am sure that most of you are waiting for. I got my facts for this particular episode from kidadl.com, onekindplanet.org, and etimonline.com. If you wish to check out these resources for yourself, please do. They are in the show notes or description of each and every episode. This episode would not have been possible without them. I would like for all of you listening to notice maybe where you're carrying some tension. I know many of us normally have our shoulders up near our ears. Sometimes it is the hands or the arms or the legs. Whatever it be, everybody really is different. In my case, it is mostly in the hands due to the nature of my work. And so I would like for all of you to go ahead and try your best to relax all of those portions of your body as we go into this immersive experience with me, Steph Wolf, into the rivers where the hippopotamus resides. This is an animal that I will have to try to control my excitement over because they are just so cool and such a unique creature. 
let me begin first by going over some things about the hippo just as a more general synoptic view of these majestic river dwellers. The hippos are part of the family Hippopotamidae. I think I said that okay. And this family incorporates large semi-aquatic mammals which are primarily naked skinned. So they're not our furry friends, our slimy friends even. They are our naked skinned friends. And this particular family, the Hippopotamidae family, has mainly two species of hippopotamus only. The common hippopotamus of sub-Saharan Africa and the other is a pygmy hippopotamus of Liberia. The common hippopotamus is also tagged as the river hippopotamus or simply just the hippo as many of us know it and call it. Apart from their size, other aspects distinguish the common hippos from the pygmy hippos. The hippos are identified for their very bulky body and unusually stumpy little feet, but don't let these little stumpy feet fool you. These are some of the heaviest land mammals that the planet Earth has to offer, and it comes second after the African bush elephant. While they are not taking the gold medal exactly in terms of the heaviest land mammal, a silver medal in terms of all of the other animals we have covered is still incredibly impressive. We might be tempted by some of these facts in terms of their bulky body and unusually stumpy feet to mistaken them as clumsy or slow. Hippopotamuses are anything but. They are fast, they are calculated, along with some of the other facts that we will learn. This makes them single-handedly one of the most dangerous land mammals that there is. The hippos prefer staying underwater for most of the day to escape from the scorching heat of the environment that they live in, but they will come back to land to mainly feed upon grasses. The species is further divided into five different subspecies that is going to be based on the territories they inhabit and the morphology of the particular hippo. The subspecies include the Nile hippopotamus, which is also referred to as the Great Northern hippopotamus, the Angola hippopotamus, the to Chad hippopotamus, or as it is often called, the West African hippopotamus. We also have the East African and the South African, or the Cape hippo. So while we may see that there are many different subspecies of the hippo, the population of the hippo is constantly under threat because of the fact that they are hunted for hide and ivory and meat, but there are several measures being taken by multiple different conservation organizations to attempt to protect this beautiful animal. The extant meaning the opposite of extinct, so the species of hippo that are still roaming around on their stubby feet in the world is currently, collectively, in between the ranges of 125,000 to 148,000 individuals left. With such a large geographic range, this is not exactly the highest number of population that they could have. The geographical distribution of the hippopotamus now is limited to mostly Africa. However, it was at one point or another widely spread 
across the territories of Europe and North Africa. But today it is particularly found in the region near the main rivers of Central Africa as well as the savanna. Its range incorporates Ethiopia, Central Africa Republic, Benin, Burundi, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Equatorial Guinea, Rwanda, Kenya, and many more. Within its geographical distribution, which now is not as wide-ranging as it once was, but within the African continent, the ideal habitat of the common hippo includes really any type of water body, but generally they are really going to like swamps, lakes, and rivers. They are going to enjoy pretty much anywhere where they have access to water and maybe even some mud banks that they can enjoy. They can deal with being in shallow water, but because of the heat, they like having deeper water so that they can submerge themselves. And deep water for such a large animal, and if we remember, the second largest land mammal, it is going to have to be decently deep, a minimum depth of about six and a half feet, which is around two meters, in order to submerge their bodies the way they like to. While they are submerging their bodies and enjoying the grasses, who do they really live with? The common hippo is commonly observed swimming or resting on the mud banks in groups, but they do enjoy their private time during their eating time. So they will graze mostly solitarily. They will not prefer to gather around and enjoy and share the grass together. They would rather go off and enjoy their meal away from their family. The temperament of the hippo can be fairly unpredictable in certain circumstances, such as when they are grazing and enjoying their food. Sometimes maybe they can even have a flare-up of temper if they are a mother hippo and something is between them and their baby. Maybe something is in between them and their water source. But one thing is for sure that if you are between a hippo and its baby and you two lock eyes, I would greatly hope that you were somewhere close to an escape route of some kind. Once that locking eyes happens and they notice that you are there, this unpredictable temperament can manifest as a charge that is truly one of the most terrifying things to see in the wild. Their dense bodies and their stubby legs will turn into these engines of force and power as they drive through the water, not doggy paddling or swimming. You will see that they go up and down through the water, and that is because they are pushing off of the riverbed the different rocks that are present in the river while diving back and forth. So when you see them moving so quickly under the water and they're bobbing up and down, that is something they can do so they can get contact with the ground and run on the river floor. That will play into the etymology of the word hippopotamus, as we will see at the end of this episode. The hippopotamus's lifespan in the wild and in captivity is relatively similar, being about 55 years, but some of the longest living hippos in captivity have lived more than 61 years of age. 
It is interesting that this is one of the few times in which there is not a stark difference or a big discrepancy between the lifespans of an animal in the wild versus in captivity where they have access to medicine and safety from predation. In the case of the hippo, I cannot imagine they have a lot of natural predators that would want to mess with them besides humans. What does the hippopotamus look like in terms of size? An adult hippopotamus in length is going to be about 3.3 to 5.2 meters. So they will be pretty big. They can weigh up to 9,000 pounds, ranging really from 2,800 to about 9,000, which means that is about 1,300 to 4,500 kilograms for those of you that prefer that unit of measurement. They will be predominantly gray with a tinge of pink around their ears and their eyes. The common hippo species is going to have the male being significantly larger than the female, a pattern that we have seen many a time on this show. A layer of thin hair will cover the body of the hippos and it is more dense near the tail and the head. I have seen pictures of hippos and they look like they have these really long whiskers. Perhaps that has some sort of usage to them. The hippos are going to be able to secrete a fluid that works as a kind of sunscreen and is called blood sweat. Because of the fact that they are devoid, bereft, they do not have sweat glands. But the ears and nostrils of the hippo are placed pretty near to the top of the head so that it can breathe just fine and be cautious of any danger. That is why I suppose they can enjoy their time being partially submerged much of the day as opposed to us who can only be submerged just below the nose before we start getting into a bit of breathing trouble. The hippopotamus however can enjoy countless hours being semi-submerged like that and just looking around like a dense stumpy little submarine. As you heard at the top of the episode, the hippo does indeed make noises and it does produce many different sounds to communicate in the water as well as on the land. They will squeak, they will croak, even whine or grunt underwater and they will do a honking sound both in the water and on land. If you are walking somewhere in the swampy kind of river areas in Africa and you hear some of these noises, you ought to be quite careful because of how fast they move. As we learned just a little bit earlier, the hippopotamus may seem clumsy by its descriptions, but they can run approximately 19 miles per hour, which is about 30 kilometers an hour. You are definitely not going to be able to out swim or out maneuver a hippo in river water, and it is pretty unlikely that you will ever be able to outrun a hippopotamus on land either. The male hippo is referred to as a bull, while the female hippos are called cows, something that we are pretty familiar with when it comes to other bovine species that we may be familiar with. When the bulls and the cows get together, they will make a baby hippo, which is called a calf or calves in its plural form. The hippopotamus babies are approximately 
48 and a half to 121 pounds. That's about 22 to 55 kilograms when they are born. There are many adult people that I personally know that weigh less than 121 pounds. So a fresh baby hippopotamus that has come into the world may just be heavier than a full-grown person. Would we really expect anything less when it came to the world's second largest land mammal? Now let us move on to the final fact of the episode, which is the name Hippopotamus. Where exactly does this name come from? So its definition from etimonline.com is an omnivorous, meaning it eats both plant and animal material. It is an omnivorous, undulate, pachydermatous mammal of Africa. And this word, hippopotamus, is going to come from the Greek word hippopotamus, which means river horse. And it came from an earlier Greek term known as ho hippos potamios, which is directly translated into English as the horse of the river. I personally now love referring to the hippopotamus as the river horse and have never thought of such a definition of a hippopotamus before this episode. But we can dig just a little bit deeper into why the Greeks thought that the hippo, the hippopotamus, was apt to be called a river horse. And I believe it is because of one of the facts we covered earlier in terms of their maneuvering through the water. I don't think that just because they like to be in the water while they have four legs is what prompted this distinction or this title, but I think because of the fact that they are not actually doggy paddling or swimming through the water, but are instead, as it were, galloping through the river as they are chasing something or moving quickly, where they are diving and running along the seafloor, pushing off the rocks and the muddy bottom to be able to move very quickly. This, I imagine, can be a pretty graceful sight as long as you are watching it on a documentary and it is not galloping in your very direction. So that is why we call it the hippopotamus. It comes from the Greek word hippopotamus, from a prior irregular formation of that horse of the river, ho hippos potamios. So I think that is just so cool. Thank you again, Emma, MJ, Kirsty, and Ava, for the seriously awesome suggestion. This episode would not have been possible without your listenership and your requesting of animals. If you wish to request an animal, please, you can reach out to the Instagram Relax with Animal Facts. You can also send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. And lastly, you can also send a request via the website Relax with Animal Facts under the Animal Request section. We are going to pull up our little rubber boots as we go a little deeper into the swampy rivers to learn even more about this particular river horse. We are going to pull up our rubber boots and trek just a little bit farther into the swampy rivers to learn more about our river horse friend on the Patreon page. And so I hope that many of you will join me there. Thank you all for listening to this episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you will join me on the next podcast episode. 
with the next animal. Take care.